I mean, it was something so different to us and uh, to be asked to go to Russia. Um, uh, we'd never played there before. And of course, in the army now, was at number one uh, for months. Um, and on the strength of that, of course, we were able to go into the, uh, to the Olympic Hall in Moscow um, and do 14 nights to 17, 18,000 people, whatever it was. And, uh, you know, there'd be like 15 minutes before you went on and there's virtually nobody in the hall and you think, Christ, we're going to die here. This was the first night. And uh, then all of a sudden, it, it just swelled. Um, and you've got all the... Uh, all the uh, the military people like down the front with a with a big with a big Russian hats on, you know. And we thought this is going to be tricky. This ain't going to be easy. Um, so we decided to uh, like uh, there were the big screens in there, and as Francis would say anything, or you know, we'd we'd flash it up on the screen, so at least he'd, they'd know what he was talking about. And uh, and um, and the words to the songs, you know, put it all up on the screen, so that they they know what we're on about at least. And you get on there, and I mean, you just wouldn't believe the reaction. Uh, they just went went mad, and you you just wouldn't think that they were going to. And as soon as they were in, and we'd we'd played our set just like that, they'd gone, boom, cleared five minutes, eighteen thousand people gone. And it was an, an amazing time because, you know, we used to stay in this hotel called the Rossier and it was, oh God, it was an awful, dirty, horrible dump, you know. And I think this was before there were any decent hotels in Moscow. I think the Rossier was the best one. Caviar every day, you know, as much as you could eat, you'd have caviar every day to the point where you get sick of it. Um, and there was always a lady at the end of the corridor um, checking on you like um, um, like security um, and real horrible old boilers you know sitting at the end of the car so you didn't bring any girls in or anything like that uh, just weren't allowed but if you bought her a pair of stockings in and dangled them in front of her you'd be allowed to bring a, a girl in if you wanted to of course you know of course we didn't, obviously. Well, I didn't anyway. Um, but it was uh, it was a very uh, an amazing experience. I mean, you know, that was in the days where the pound was a rupee. You know, it was even, and then you'd find people in the streets selling a rose for one rupee. You know, and the things that you could get, you had to be very careful in those days walking around in proper denim jeans or you know nike pumps or anything you know because you're going to get you're going to get mugged for your jeans or your pumps so you had to be very careful what you what you walked around in and the cars we went to the gigs in i mean they were always just breaking down the pollution in moscow was just appalling the place you could hardly breathe there the air was brown and uh, I can't say it was a very nice time, to be honest with you. We, um, the main thing we had to use, because we had security in the hall to look after the gear, because obviously we'd leave the gear on stage every night, and there was uh, security all around the stage every night. But the main concern was we'd taken a whole lorry load of food with us, because we thought, well, you know, the food in Moscow is going to be... So we took this amount of food that filled a room, you know, all four walls, it was stacked with beans and everything that we know and love, you know. And uh, that had to be padlocked and, uh, and guarded every night, that food. They seemed to think that that was the main threat, not the gear on stage, but the food. And uh, it wasn't a totally uh, a pleasurable experience, really. It, it really wasn't. But it was very... Um, it was very flattering, I guess, to to sell out 17 nights at the Olympic Hall, you know. Big in Russia. Very big. Or in Moscow, anyway. Big in Moscow. 
Rhino said there was a, a real pecking order with the seating as well. He said like the government and the army seem to get better seating than the people. Isn't Very it? much so. Oh. All the front rows were all government officials and very um, stiff upper lip, you know, and very, uh, as I say, the military, all, all in full uniform, you know, sitting there like that, Im impress us. <laughs> Russian impress us. Not very good, was it? Um, and it was, a, it was a, you know, it was... It was a strange feeling walking out on that stage because, again, it was the first time we'd ever done anything like that to a stiff audience, as it were, you know. We thought, if we can get this lot up, we can get anybody up. And sure enough, we got them up. We got them up in the end. And uh, it was a great feather in our cap, we felt, you know, to get these military people up. And, <laughs> you know. And in the army now, of course, when we played that, the roof came off the place, you know. And so, uh, no, it was it was... A, it was a very interesting trip, but it wasn't necessarily very pleasant.